Hi, welcome to this introduction to application development with Oracle Visual Builder. My name is Shai Schmelzer, and in this demonstration, we'll show you how to build applications with Visual Builder. Visual Builder provides a web interface for creating applications. Let's create a new application from our browser. We provide a name, and we can also choose a template for our application. Right now, we're just going to choose the default template for our application and create it. In the application, we create various objects. We're going to start by creating a responsive web application. We can choose from a template for how our application would behave, including, for example, a navigation menu that we're creating over here. We create two options in our navigation, and we're clicking Finish to be directed into our visual page editor. Over here on the left side, we can see a set of all the components we can add to our page. We can search the component and pick components and simply drag and drop them into the visual editor to create our pages. We have over 150 Oracle Jet components listed on the left side, and you can also add your own components if you want to. In our case, we are creating two sections for the page. In one of the sections, we're adding a search component, and below that, we would add a table. On the right side, we want to add one of the chart components that Visual Builder offers. We're going to add a bar chart. As you can see, each component can be resized, and the properties for each component are displayed on the right side. For example, we can take the search component and bind it to a variable. This would be a page level variable that would save some information at the page level, for example, our search variable. While we've worked visually, we also have the code of the application here behind the scene. And the code is pure HTML. You can change the HTML code or change things in the visual interface. It's your choice. Next, we're going to add business objects to our application. Business object would host data. We're going to take a little shortcut and load an Excel spreadsheet and create business objects based on this Excel spreadsheet. In our case, this spreadsheet has three data sheets, and we're going to create three business objects that map to each one of those data sheets. A business object creates a table in an Oracle database in the cloud with the set of fields that we can see over here and loads the data from the Excel into the data table in the database. We can now add additional fields to the business object. Uh, for example, we're going to add a Boolean field to indicate whether an employee is a manager. We can also create relationship between objects. So we're going to create a relationship between an employee and a department object uh, to indicate which employee works in which department. Through this interface, we created our uh, business object. And now we have a bunch of REST endpoints that allow us to interact with this business object and the relationship. We can do all the CRUD operation, create, read, update, and delete. Now we can take our user interface and use a quick start to bind our interface to the business object we created. In our case, we're taking the table and mapping it to the employee business object, selecting specific fields that we're going to show in the table. We can decide how to show each one of those fields. For example, we want to show the image of the employee. We also know how to do queries against the business objects. In our case, we're going to do a search by name using the search variable we defined before. So by going through this quick start, we now have a table with data coming from a table in an Oracle database, and we can filter the table to return specific sets of records. Let's also take the chart and use a quick start to bind the chart component to the same business object. This time, we're going to show the salary for each employee. And we're also going to define our filter over here in the same way, filtering by name based on the same search variable. So now when we run our page, we can actually switch to live mode, put in a value, and see the results in the list and in the chart. We can then, of course, go to the chart and modify other properties, for example, switch the chart to be horizontal. So we saw how easy it is to take and create user interfaces connected to business objects. We can also create edit pages, insert pages, delete pages, etc. In our case, we're going to add a new edit page using another quick start. This would allow us to select an employee in the table 
and go to edit it. So right now we need to select an employee and click a button. However, we can change the default behavior that was generated for us. For example, if we don't want the button to be there, we can add an event that would catch the click on an employee in the table and do the navigation from there. So Visual Builder is an event-driven environment. Here's the event. We can add declarative steps. As you can see, we have all sorts of actions here. So for example, call a REST service, invoke JavaScript, do conditional things. For example, in our case, we're going to take a condition for an if then else. And we're going to check, for example, whether the employee ID equals a specific value or not equal a specific value. It's very easy this way in a declarative way to build your business logic. Okay. So for example, if it's not employee number one, we're going to go and navigate to our edit page. If it is employee number one, we're going to show an arrow saying you can't edit this employee. All of those functionalities are done using declarative action chains that we drag and drop and position in our action chain environment. So we define the error message that we want to show. We define the page that we want to navigate to. And all of this is translated into JavaScript code. Again, just like before, the code is accessible and you can modify the code directly. In addition, you can add your own code over here. For example, I'm going to just add one line of JavaScript code over here to show you that I can call any JavaScript function. You can see we have code insight over here in our code editor as well, syntax highlighting. And the code is just here and I can now reposition it just by dragging and dropping. This will of course impact the position of the code in our code editor as well. All right, so we'll bind our navigation to the edit page. And now we need to pass in information about which employee we want to edit. This is a parameter that we're mapping over here. Again, this is a very easy way to do assignments. Let's see our application in action. If we click on Sean, the first employee, we say we can't edit this one. But if we click on any other employee, we'll be navigated into the page where we can edit the details of this employee. The information about the employee is being fetched into the page and we can now edit it. We can, of course, modify again this page, for example, to create two columns of data over here. And um, if we now go over and update, you can see fetching relationships over here between employees and departments, setting up whether an employee is a manager, saving the data, and this is reflecting in our homepage. Now we're going to edit this edit page and add another source of data. So beyond working with built-in business object, we can also create mapping to external REST services. We have service catalog that covers the Oracle Fusion apps, the Oracle integration. You can use Open API and Swagger services, or you can use any other REST service. In our example over here, we're taking the URL for a specific REST service that returns information about countries. If it were requiring authentication, we can set the authentication. In our case, this service doesn't require authentication. We can invoke the service to see the results that are coming back from it. And we're gonna save this as an example of the results that this REST service adds. From this point on, Visual Builder would know how to use this REST service. For example, over here, we're going back into the design mode for the edit page, and we're going to add a drop-down list to allow us to select a specific country. Okay. We're going to use a quick start to bind this single select component to the list of countries coming from the REST service. So just like we did with a business object, now we're accessing data from an external REST service. We're going to show the name of the country and we're going to return the code of the country. Then we're going to map this to be saved in the country information saved for the employee. So now this list is mapped to the same data that is populating the country field on the left side. And you would see now that if I switch to live mode, if I pick something from the list, it's going to impact the value shown over here. And if I change something here, we're going to pick up the information about the country in the list. So this is how easy it is to integrate external REST services into our application. You can use the REST service across all the pages in your application. For example, you can use this data palette over here to look up the country's REST service, drag and drop it into your page to create, for example, a list of countries. 
Again, using our very easy binding of data into UI components, we're picking attributes that are returned from the REST service and hooking them up to items in our list. We're going to show the flag of a country, the name of the country, and some other information such as population about the country. Click Next and Finish, and we'll have a new page that lists all the country in the world, including their flags over here. Let's run our application. We now have the application working completely with the ability to filter. Click on a specific employee to go and update the information about this employee getting information from an external REST service, allowing us to update information, including relationship between tables, save the information back into the database, and our application is now complete. We can also navigate to the other part of the application and get information from an external REST service about the countries around the world. You just saw how easy it is to create and publish applications with Visual Builder. This is done using a visual development approach that allows you to visually design your application, bind your user interface to various sources of data, visually design your business logic using JavaScript as the development language, easily create and store data in tables in an Oracle database and access them through a REST API, how you can query and manipulate this data, how you can integrate with external data using REST APIs, and how with a single click you can publish and host your application. For more information, visit our website.